Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth Sahagan, and for my annotated bibliography presentation, I chose Seasons. And today I'd like to share uh, the two books that I really thought would be a great addition to your classroom library for kindergarten through second. The first book is called Paint a Sun in the Sky, A First Look at Seasons. And it's written by Claire Llewellyn, and it's illustrated by Amanda Wood. It's got beautiful illustrations, and I, I love this book because it tells uh, a first look at seasons for young children. And what it does is it goes through each season, and it just it just tells the different things that happen to the children in the city through the seasons. Uh, it starts talking about, you know, in the spring, what happens in the spring, you know? It's still light out when we get home from school. You know, what we wear in the spring. You know, and then it goes in, into summer and what, you know, what happens in the summer. Um, and then, you know, in the winter, how we change clothes and it gets snowy and we can go on ice. And, you know, in autumn, the leaves come down. And I, I love that it, it just, it's from a young child's point of view. And they can see um, what happens through the different seasons. So, you know, when you're doing something in your class just to introduce seasons. It's a great book um, to have so the children can just get a simple idea. And like I said, the pictures are, it's beautifully done. So um, I think that would be a great book for your classroom library. Uh, the next book that I really liked uh, for classroom library is called When the Shad Bush Blooms. Uh, this is about a Lenape Indian family. And it all centers around kind of around this shadfish bloom tree. But the main idea of the story is this young girl um, goes, you know, goes down the stream with her brother. They fish. It goes through uh, different things, different seasons that the Indian family does. But what this book does, and I don't know if you can see, is on the one side, it gives a perspective from when her grandparents were living by that same stream. And then this is the girl and her brother today. So each time you go through each of the, um, the different parts of the book, it has a picture that represents um, her ancestors and then them today. So the girl's realizing that all of these things that happen and during the different seasons, um, her ancestors, her grandparents have seen all this, just, you know, at a different time. And I just love how each one, you know, as they go through planting seed, or through the summer or through the autumn, you know, finding pumpkins, that each of these are depicted from the older Lenape Indians to the nowaday. It's a great multicultural book. Um, it's also a great book for relationships, families, um, to teach children about. It, I just think it's a great addition to any classroom library. My third through sixth grade books, um, the first one is called Oxcart Man. It's a Caldecott medal winner. This book was written in 1979, but I still think it has great importance for today. Um, great social studies activities could be done with this because of the time period. It's about a New England family, um, and it goes through how the man um, raises his ox, takes him with the cart, they start off, you know, shearing, shearing the sheep, taking the wool. It talks about how the family works together to make money uh, for their family. You know, the man uses the ox and the cart for many things. He finally, through the middle of the story, the man ends up selling all the things, including the ox and the cart, because he wants to get other things for the family. You know, he gets the, the young man a knife and... He gets um, the daughter something so she can sew and gets the mother something. But he eventually has to sell his ox and cart and other things so he can get these things for the family. But at the end of the book, what happens is you see him, um, after he's bought all these gifts, he actually starts over because he's got a young ox in the, in the barn. And so the whole thing starts over again. He raises a young ox and makes a new yoke and gets a new cart. And then the whole um, system cycle starts over again. But I, I just love the fact that this is from a time period that um, children um, can learn from. And again, it's a great relationship uh, about the family and 
um, how you have to work hard and, and be part of a family and everyone works together. So I think it'd be a great book for third through sixth grade. Again, even though it was written 79, still has some great lessons. The book I picked to do the read aloud from is called We Are Grateful, uh, Atsali Halega, which means we are grateful in Cherokee. And I love this book because um, it also depicts a modern family, but it goes through some of uh, the Cherokee words, the Cherokee ceremonies. Um, it gives us a look into um, the Cherokee Indians. So again, be a great thing for social studies as well as ELA. Um, and it gives Cherokee words that the children can learn, which is kind of a fun thing, you know, to learn some, some new words you don't know. So I'm going to try, I'm going to attempt to read this. Um, some of the Cherokee words are not the easiest, but here goes. Cherokee people say Ata Salihaliga to express gratitude. It is a reminder to celebrate our blessings and reflect on struggles daily throughout the year and across the seasons. And it tells you down here, and it also gives you the pronunciation. So it's Ojaliheliga. We are grateful. And fall. When cool breezes blow and leaves fall, we say Ota Sali Halega. And in fall, fall is pronounced Uligo Hasdi. Uligo Hasdi means fall or autumn. And see, it also has beautiful pictures of the, the modern family and just, you know, what happens in autumn. But then it goes to, you know, some of their traditions. As shell shakers dance all night around the fire and burnt cedar scent drifts upward during the great new moon ceremony. As we clean our houses, wear new clothes, enjoy a feast, and forget old quarrels to welcome the Cherokee New Year. While we collect buckbrush and honeysuckle to weave baskets, to remember our ancestors who suffered hardship and loss on the Trail of Tears and have hope as our Elisi, Grandma, cradles the newest member of the family and reveals his Cherokee name. And Elisi, A-Lisi, means grandmother. So this book, again, is just a beautiful um, addition to have in your library, a uh, multicultural book, and um, just a great story, again, about family relationships and, um, and a neat book that you could use in social studies. So thank you, and I hope that um, some of these you can add to your classroom library.